Are you successful in life and want to make fun of those below you? You know, the stupids, the idiots, the stupidiots, the dummies, the Karens, the Kevins, if you will. No? Uh, well, me neither. Regardless, it's still fun to make fun of Kevins. So uh, that's why today I welcome you to Daily Dose of Reddit. I'm your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash stories about Kevin. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story is called Life Mistakes of Kevin, Artist of Failure. This is not all my own stuff. It's condensed as a group effort of two into a single post for ease of consumption. This is extremely long, like 13,000 characters, so be warned that this would usually be three or four separate parts here. All right, this one is... Kevin went to a thing that was supposed to help him with his depression, anxiety, idiot brain, and on the way back from said activity, his girlfriend, think of a 13-year-old who looked like a crackhead who then probably turned into a crackhead, asked him to have sex with her in the middle of a public park with some woods nearby. Being a huge virgin, Kevin said yes, and as she had pulled down her pants and told him to love her, he got her poop shoot and other thing mixed up and ended up sticking it in said poop shoot. Either way, she probably didn't notice. He felt the need to tell me about this in a science lesson in year 9, about midway through a very interesting discussion about physics. He did this because we, at the time, confided in each other. However, I haven't talked to him in about a year, so this one's fair game. One time in year 10, Kevin decided that it was a great idea to spend 120 pounds on a gaming phone. This was a terrible idea, but he didn't know it yet. Kevin had always had troubles with spending money he didn't have or spending all the money he did have and then complaining that he had none left, as you do. One day, Kevin is sitting at home on his bed when he gets up suddenly and hit his new phone with his Kevin arm. The phone drops one foot from his bed to a carpet floor. The phone hits the carpet floor and proceeds to shatter. Screen cracked with his glass on the floor. Some of the side fell off too. The phone looked like the type of thing you'd see if someone fired their phone at a brick wall with a t-shirt cannon. Kevin, needless to say, was not happy and came into school sulking the next few days as it meant he couldn't sit on his phone in class playing CSGO Case Clicker. Yes, that's what he did with his time, in lessons, at break, and at lunch. Forgive my forgetful mind, but if I recall correctly, at one point in secondary, probably year 8 to 10, kind of a big window, I know, he decided, I'm not getting any pity sex or pity friendships and I want them now. So, the only logical choice for Kevin was to tell people that his little brother was dying of cancer. He kept the facade up for so long that some of us genuinely started to believe it. He managed to get him to not attend parent evenings with him and his mom, just so that the illusion would last a little bit longer. But one day, he made the mistake of calling his mom to come and get him from school. Unbeknownst to him, his mother had bought his dying of cancer brother with her and almost the whole year saw them crossing to the reception building, to which she was heavily quizzed about later with questions consisting of, shouldn't your brother be a little more uh, bald? And why is he not in the hospital where you said he was last week? Needless to say, Kevin doesn't keep his story straight. I knew Kevin from year three, when he transferred from a different primary school to mine. For reference, this is in southern England, but not London. He was popular for a few days before everyone got over the new kid in school excitement and pretty soon implemented himself as a best friend of mine, who was also a Kevin at the time, albeit of less proportion, both physically and Kevin-y, hence the shenanigans. In year four, this fine example of Kevinitis was into Roblox. This is years back, specifically when it was still in beta, so it wasn't the meme machine it is now. School set a summer project to make something creative, basically, so he did the obvious thing, make a Roblox place, print out a bunch of the links, and have that be his project. Nobody looked at it. Fast forward a few years to year six. He was, by this point, well known in the school for being a bit socially dim. And no, I know for a fact he did not have mental stuff, he got checked more on that later, and had that one kid you avoid reputation. I naturally didn't notice at all since I shared the very same along with a couple other odd ones. Every year, the year sixes in school go to the Isle of Wight, 
Basically, imagine shoving a bunch of Year 6s into chalets, smashing them through a theme park and various other activities such as zip lining. We were, at most, allowed to bring in 20 pounds for buying stuff while there. Food and such were provided otherwise. Now, you may think, if one desires sweets, there's two main ways to go about this. Buy them from a shop or buy them from a fellow student. Kevin found another. In the amusement park, there were some claw machines. They were filled with the cheapest sweets. Love hearts, hair bows, all that. Guaranteed to win. One pound to go. This is a terrible idea. This fine Kevin dumped all 20 pounds into this on the first day, before eating them all on the same day. Before later throwing it all back up, then complained continuously whenever other people bought stuff and attempted pressuring money out of others. It didn't work. Now, for a few years, I did not see him, which is when the above tale from a different author occurred. Reason is, he went to a different secondary school to me, but alas, I was not yet free of my bonds. For he done did transfer school so as to return the curse unto me. Almost immediately, he started mimicking the stuff I had done. At the time, I had word processor privilege for exams. For my handwriting is abysmal, and Kevin was not satisfied not having it. The requirements for obtaining it, even if you don't need it, are extremely easy. You must simply prove that you cannot write fast, can type between 80 words per minute and 140 words per minute, and you must have a psychologist appointment, no clue what type of exam it is, to ascertain the usual stuff, autism, ADHD, all that. I am certain he had none, as he'd absolutely have boasted about it to everyone. Another of Kevin's early adventures of massively failing to fit in was during the first few weeks. He considered any one female who could have a conversation with him to be him getting in with them. This culminated within two weeks of him joining and him doing the big do. He sent Richard pics. As you would expect, within a day of literally everyone who cared had them. And naturally, he immediately lost all credibility again with everyone. Now, any other Kevin, let alone a normal person, would realize it's a bad idea. He did it twice more to different girls, each time having about the same reaction until eventually nobody would give him their numbers anymore. I am fairly sure he never again held a conversation with a female after this point, and additionally, only had the fellow people of not-so-great social equity not realize his depth of Kevin yet, mostly those who didn't have the pics. Kevin additionally had had to do the English baccalaureate, which basically means English plus math plus core science plus geography or history plus a language plus then some other choices that aren't important. He had picked French for his language, but didn't really want to do French, and therefore did the obvious thing. When he first transferred, he made a request to not have to continue French. The school declined since it is solid lessons and this would leave him on a free period, which is not the greatest situation. He therefore turned up the fires and began to refuse to go into the lessons, which tanked his attendance and effectively screwed up any chances he might have had at getting into a college. The school eventually buckled, meaning he was free to sit on a bench somewhere and do nothing instead of in the French class to do nothing. Big win for Kevin. As a result of Kevin's fine wangling, he was, as mentioned, going to have a hard time getting into a college unless he was a student pulling A's. He was not, and therefore managed to obtain a conditional offer for an apprenticeship, requiring three C's in GCSEs, which is usually fairly easy to obtain even for someone of Kevin's caliber. However, Kevin did the obvious thing, which is to assume it was an unconditional offer, and proceed to tell the school and everyone who would listen this. He also reasoned that his GCSEs didn't matter too much now, so relaxed a lot but continued to pull C's. He basically just sailed through the next year or two with relatively little incident, doing bare minimum work. Now, a thing about GSEEs is you can pass all of them with very little effort as long as you're not literally high and or drunk in your exams. 
This Kevin managed to do everything possible wrong in his exams while not actually getting disqualified. His first exam he tried properly in, specifically biology, and got a C. This is the only pass he got. His next exam, he turned up having not slept the night before, proceeded to basically just go, eh, I have an unconditional apprenticeship, I don't care, and proceeded to sleep through his exam. From there, it got worse, somehow. After a few exams of sleeping, after which the invigilators gave up bothering to wake him up, he showed up drunk with a bottle of alcohol in his bag. The next day, he was drunk and high. Then, he did possibly the most crazy thing I have ever heard of anyone do in an exam, and still stands as the single most great accomplishment of a GCSE student. Now he has his word processor privileges, which means he's in a small room with all the people with extra time and such. This is about seven to eight students with three invigilators. The exam accounts are supposedly secure, which in school terms means they're freaking administrators and they can literally delete every user in the school if they wanted to. They just deleted all the icons. Kevin realized this at this point and found a much better diversion from his actual duties as a student, rather than using his newfound powers to, you know, cheat in his exams or something similar, as Chrome could be accessed and used simply by searching it through Windows, he opened Cool Math Games, the legendary site itself, and played Run for the next seven or so exams. I crap you not. This goddamn man actually chose to play Run 3 over cheating in his exams. He could have looked at other people's exams. He could have Googled the answers. He could have done anything. He literally could not be bothered with the effort. Afterwards, he realized, oh crud, that apprenticeship was conditional. And I have no idea what he's actually doing now. However, I do know some of the things that have happened in his life. The first is that around last year, the forms for child benefits had to be resubmitted, meaning everyone stopped getting their payments from it for a while. His family were lacking in money and therefore this meant they were unable to pay their rent in full. He therefore needed to get a job. Literally any job would have done it, but he was unable to find one. This is a man with so few qualifications, he was unable to find a job even as a paperboy, which I put down to him having one GCSE and being socially not the greatest, meaning bad interview. The money did come through again, a few days before their deadline for being evicted, saving him from being homeless. But it stands that he was unable to get even the worst job for about three months. This is possibly on the same level as his exam stuff. It is to do with his liking of Roblox. He never lost it until his exams. He had about 20 accounts, about three to four of which were beta ones and therefore have extremely old items you can't obtain anymore. Specifically, about four to five copies of the extremely rare fedoras that go for tens of thousands of Robux. These were obtained by stealing his mother's credit card and overdrawing it, which I still don't know why he suffered only a month's grounding for considering he did it twice. But it meant that his accounts were extremely valuable. Roblox has a system called DevX, meaning Robux can be converted to real money, so those hats were legitimately worth a fair bit. But their value increases constantly as they get older, so unless you need the money, there's not much point. He, firstly, did not realize this was possible during his earlier financial woes, but also allowed all of these accounts to get cracked and the hats stolen and some of the others scammed. Roblox do offer the rollbacking of trades from this through their support, and I'm pretty sure it's fairly easy even for some of the most valuable items that exist, but he could not be bothered to send them an email to get them back. I struggle to even comprehend his reasoning. But it still stands that this Kevin may well win the number one Lazy Kevin Award. Kevin also liked to game. He was not very good, and it was most likely because he got very salty very fast, probably the fastest I have ever seen. He could die literally once and immediately go into the usual, this game is bullcrap, why would they even design it like that? stage. Shortly thereafter, going into screaming swears, all the while saying stuff like, wrecked noob, whenever he actually got a kill. 
Now, Kevin plus anger plus electronics may sound to you like a bad combo, and that's because <laughs> you're right. Over the years, to my knowledge, he has smashed about four TV screens, three phones at least, probably way more, an Xbox, many Xbox controllers, and probably more. I have no idea how his family managed to keep giving him new stuff considering their shaky financial situation, nor why considering his personality. Okay, this guy has a lot of issues. And now, of those issues, a lot of them involve other people, and he should not be sending unsolicited, uh, Richard pics. And it's illegal now, so don't do that again. Those poor girls, man. Jeez. Also, that Roblox thing is really cool. I had no idea that you could convert Robux into real money. That's a really cool thing. I gotta check if I have anything rare on Roblox, because I was there pretty early, too. This story's called The Sum of All Kevins. This is my nephew, 18 male. Been reading this sub for a while and thought it was time to contribute my Kevin. Kevin once forgot to buy a Christmas present for his uncle, not me, my brother. We were at this uncle's house visiting him for Christmas. Never mind the fact that his uncle didn't even care about presents. Kevin was in a bizarre panic to get a present on Christmas Eve at 6 p.m. At 1 a.m., everyone was awakened when they heard a deafening glass smash from the living room. Me and my wife stormed downstairs with guns drawn, assuming a burglar had come in through a window. We come down to discover a man, clearly Kevin, running out the open door onto the street with a smashed fishbowl and 10 dead fish flopping on the floor next to the chimney. Two hours later, Kevin comes home and tells us he was at the bar and swears he didn't drop the fish down the chimney. The next morning, he admits it was him trying to be Santa. Another time, he wrote a huge semester research paper, supposed to be 20 pages, for college, by hand, while eating breakfast on the morning he was supposed to turn it in. Once he cooked a chicken by frying it in wine, his words, he filled a frying pan with white wine and made a crazy, stringy chicken mess with horrible alcohol smells filling the house. One morning, I woke up to horrible screaming from the bathroom. Apparently, while tired in the morning, he sprayed his balls with Lysol instead of his usual body spray. He spent the morning in the urgent care. He told me, Bees don't pollinate, only hornets do. Bees are too small to get in a flower. It would eat them. He, uh, made love to a bottle of vinegar. One morning, he was making a ham and cheese sandwich and stopped to tell me that the ham had hard bits in it. He never took it out of its package. He was eating a plastic Ziploc. He printed business cards with the family address on it that he gave to a woman with his phone number for rear end alignment. He snorted paprika into his nose and told me it was good for headaches. He threw up later. He went down a ski slope on one ski and broke his ankle and despite the pain, rolled down the slope intentionally on his belly. He stuck his big fat belly onto an entire pizza that we ordered for the family and ate the olives that stuck onto his belly with a spoon. Okay, that pizza one just doesn't make sense. Why would you do that? You know, the other stuff might be somewhat justifiable, but how did he... T what? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.